welcome to um, the Aless um, Together podcast. My name is Franklin Boatin, aka the King of Trainers. Um, this week's episode is Friends of Aless um, and Fans of Aless. Um, and I have a very great um, guy, um, a long time member of the kingdom, um, someone who has loved the brand for a number of years, Mr. Mart West. How are we doing, sir? Hey, Franklin, how are you doing? I'm well, I'm well, I'm well, I'm well. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, I appreciate it. No problem. No, it's great to be here. Nice to see you. Good stuff. You've been keeping well during this time? Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we've been really lucky. Um, uh, we live up in the northwest of England here, and it's, uh, I, I don't think we've been uh, as affected quite as much as... Uh, as some of the people and I know down south is it's really bad at the moment yeah. but uh, no we, we've been really well uh, family are all good so yeah it's, it's been good it's, it's considering everything that's going on yeah. it's, it's all good no oh, good stuff good stuff I hope it continues to go well for you guys so tell us a bit about yourself right okay well as you said a member of your community <laughs> yeah, it is the, the sneaker community. So, um, no, it's, uh, I've been um, a collector of both trainers, sneakers, uh, and, and fashion item clothing brands for, for quite a long time now. I think I said I'm probably one of the older members of, uh, of the community. Um, but, uh, yeah, probably since the, the early to mid-80s is when I first sort of really got into um, my brands, my, my trainers, and uh, um, the, the clothes that we were wearing at the time and obviously Aless was one of the the, the massive brands uh, uh, out there and that was the brand that everybody wanted to um, you know to, to get a, get a piece of the trainers get a piece of the, the clothing that they were bringing out because that was just the you know the key brand to, to have pieces for so I, I was lucky enough to to be able to get some they, they were quite expensive back in the day um, <laughs> Yeah. The, the the price points change now, which is good. Um, but it, you used to have to save up uh, when I was a kid growing up to to get you know those those key pieces of clothing that you wanted, the t-shirts and and it was all about the badge. You know yeah. the the branding was just yeah. <laughs> uh, that 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 design. It, we we can't speak too highly of, of the design. You know mm. the, the the branding that they they used in terms of the you know the two skis and the and the tennis ball is just. It's just absolutely stunning, and and that's just iconic. Um, and you know, I know there's been some little tweaks to it over the years. I know that, but it on the whole, it's it's stayed the same, and it's just you know, it's recognised throughout the world. So, so for me, Aless is it's I've grown up with Aless right right from the uh, you know from the early eighties. Nice, nice one, nice one. So, what what got you into um, um, the footwear and, and Aless as as I think a less really was uh, I, I got into that through um, through tennis, mm. um, so I, I used to really enjoy watching tennis. I, I don't watch it as much now because um, you know we, we've got a lot going on in our lives, and it's not as yeah. easy to just take two weeks off from, and watch Wimbledon mm. um, like like we used to be able to do when we were kids. Mm -hmm. But for me, it, it was the tennis. So um, I, mean, I mean, back in the day, and I've got something here that that I'll show you. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Yeah, um, and I'm sure we'll get on to your sneakers that, that yeah. you brought out with a less at some point during this conversation. <laughs> if you don't bring it, I, I will be bringing it up because they are awesome. I, I appreciate so, that. I've got yeah, so I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, um, but that's yeah. Uh, that's yeah, that's yeah. A look up a little bit. There for Wimbledon. Yeah, that's it. So that's a ticket for Wimbledon for the opening day. Uh, in 1985, uh, which was the wow. year obviously that Boris actually won, so that that's my ticket <laughs> for Wimbledon. Wow! So that that kind it of says gives four you... pounds on there. Yeah, four pounds, wow. and that was including VAT. So check that out. We we were including VAT with that, so you know it's all <laughs> all good stuff. Um, oh my god! So, yeah, wow. What happened with that was that that was ground admission. So I, I went down, I think it was with my parents actually, went, went down to, to London, to Wimbledon, and we stayed, stayed overnight mm -hmm. in a hotel and then went, went and queued outside the ground. And we'd, we'd got the ground only tickets. Mm -hmm. but, but back in the day, you could actually you could get in. And then they had a very, very small number for release. Uh, to the centre court and the number one court. Mm -hmm. So you could join another queue inside Wimbledon 
and if you were early enough, which we were, mm -hmm. you could then get tickets to centre or, or number one, the old number one court. Wow. So we, we the queued up um, with the, with these tickets, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we managed to get on centre court for the opening game, which was John McEnroe and Peter McNamara. Um, wow. And that was the, that was my first experience of, of kind of Wimbledon. Yeah, um, but obviously, when we were walking around, everyone was in the you know the sportswear, and Aless was just such a big brand at that time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you had players like Chris Ever, who came, you know Chris Ever Lloyd, as she became Boris Becker, yeah. uh, Arantha Sanchez, wow. um, and you know, and through right to sort of likes of Anna Kournikova and people like that, who were all repping the Aless brand, which was yeah. just like to to see. You know, we, we used to wear it as, as kids and growing up, but then to see, you know, the big sports stars of the day yeah. wearing that brand. So, but I mean, the, the funny thing about that opening match with John McEnroe, he actually came out in a pair of black shorts mm -hmm. and Wimbledon, it's all white. So he yeah. actually, he did his warm up. Mm -hmm. He played his warm up with with McNamara, and then the the, uh, the umpire told him to get back to the changing room and get into a pair of white shorts. So he had to he had to go back and get oh, changed. Oh wow! So that is crazy. Obviously, I think John lost in the I think it was a quarter final or something like that, and I think he lost mm -hmm. to Kevin Curran, mm -hmm. who obviously Boris played oh, in the Kevin final Turner. and yeah. beat. But but on that same on that same day, Boris Becker, who obviously he was wearing all his LS gear, mm -hmm. um, he actually lost his opening. I think he lost his opening set. Um, okay. To was it Henry Feister? I think. Wow. Um, the American. So he lost his opening set at Wimbledon, but obviously then he went on all the way through to to win to win Wimbledon. And uh, clearly he was repping the LS brand back in the day as well. Wow. So so that's kind of my. Earlier memories of, of um, you know the LS brand and stuff. So as you can see, I've I've been around a long time. <laughs> you, you definitely have. You definitely have. Like, <laughs> wow, that is that is insane. That you still got the ticket. That is that's you know. Well, I, I, I'm a little bit sad like that because every every sort of gig I go to, every concert, every event, I, I try and keep all the tickets. And and over the years, I, well. Back in the day, I used to frame them all, so I had to had to literally peel this out of a frame to oh. to to get it up to show you today. Oh wow! Um, oh, oh, thank you, man. But, I'm so honoured, man. But, but what I really liked about that was the the colourway. So if you if you check out the colours, it's yeah. kind of that dark navy blue and the sky blue. <laughs> so who who was wearing dark navy blue and sky blue? I, I have no I idea. Find, <laughs> I think that you is... might find. It was, the LS repping Mr. Boris Becker, right. um, who, who you design your shoe on the, you know, the tanker, the, which, uh, I mean, we do need to talk about that as well, because that, that is just <laughs> oh, such an awesome shoe. Yeah. So, so right. for me, that, that, was, that was my kind of, of introduction, and, I, you know, I, I was wearing, um, you know, sort of different trainers at the time, so sort of like the marathon, mm -hmm. um, I think it was around back then, the tanker. Yeah. Um, yeah, which I think was one of the, mm -hmm. I think it still is, and obviously they, they've retroed it recently, and and, mm -hmm. and you you've done your bit with that, um, but that that design, that, that sort of Mark Sadler design in the tanker, and I, I am just going to bring you bring, bring yes, <laughs> that that is just. Look, yeah, I mean, you know me, I, I like my toe box and, mm -hmm. and I like that shape, and mm -hmm. that is just you know yeah. what what hasn't this shoe got so. Yeah. It's got the gum. It's got the gum sole with the branding on, which mm -hmm. is just you know, it's absolutely superb. Mm -hmm. I absolute sucker for a, for a gum sole, mm -hmm. but then and you know, yeah, that's that's the, the that branding again is just is just absolutely it's it's immense and, and it's just superb. And it's such a good trainer. Mm -hmm. And when when the you know the LS Design Council said that that was the shoe that they were going to use for for you guys to to come and do your work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the shoes that I've seen, and we'll talk about yours in a sec, <laughs> but, you know, Cal Cali Vegas's shoe. Incredible. Mind-blowing. Incredible. The, 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 just the colours, you know, and what I like is the colours that people have used. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, he went for that sort of, that dark green suede with the yeah. pops of blue mm -hmm. on it. The, the visionarism model, yeah. that was just... Wicked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. I mean that to, to have white with just the little touches of gold on it. I yeah. think that was just absolutely superb. And then obviously we we've got to talk about yours. Oh, yeah. I, I hope you've got a hand. Have you got a pair to hand? I'm gonna. You know what? 
Hold, hold there. What? We'll pause one there. Let me let me go and get grab it. And we'll... <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, the design council. Sorry, this is. Sorry, let me cut. Yeah. So this. Don't, is don't tell me the box is dusty already. Uh, no, it's surely, you know, surely that box is flying off the shelf every single every, day. No, this, is on. The, this is one of them. You know what? It is? This is my, my one of my, my my pairs that I'm I'm using for a, a spare pair, but um. But yeah, so this is, I'm, I'm still, I was in the process of relacing, relacing them, but, but yeah, this is my pair. <laughs> I know, I don't, I don't want to overshow it because I know I've showed it so much, but mm. because I'm, I'm I, you. It deserves to be overshown. It, it's, I mean, it, that, I mean, look at us, that's, that's the tanker model. Um, and this is, it's, this is broadly a kind of, of an OGA. I mean, mm. I, well, I must admit, when I, I remember the tanker model, it, it was a high top as well. Yeah. With sort of the really big branding on the side, and and, yeah. and I remember wearing pairs of those. You know that that kind of tanker model. I've got I've but got I've got just the well. the suede, the colour and the suede well, on. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get OG as well. One, one second. He's he's the best. Um. So yeah. So <laughs> OG here. Yeah. Big ups to Neil. Yeah. So there's the OG. Yeah. Version. Mm. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, so that's the OG version with the big yeah. screen. Uh, have you seen Sneaker Queen's one of this? Sneaker Queen. I have, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Her oh, one. That as well. Brilliant. There's, Brilliant. That's well, great. there isn't a bad design, is there? You, nah, you, you can't nah. go wrong. No respect, but you can't go wrong with you, that you silhouette, can you? And, no, I think it's also important that we we mention. I, I always mention this that this, you know, and this is what um Callie mentions is this brand, this particular shoe, it broke the it broke like a lot of the kind of uh, traditions, you know, with like the big branding mm. and also like the colors and everything. And then, you know, a lot of, a lot of other brands, they, they copied, <laughs> so to speak, they copied. So yeah. we have to, yeah, we have to. Well, give I, it. I mean, I, I think, uh, cause uh, you know, Mark had that kind of history um, of design, but I don't think it was with trainers, was it? It was more, it was ski wear. So ski wear, yeah. when he was, uh, ski when he was designed, and it was kind of ski boot kind of thing. So, um, and I, I think he'd done some work with Lotto and, and other Italian brands. And then obviously, Leonardo brought him on board and they worked on, on the tanker shoe. And that, you know, it, it did. It just literally broke the mold. Well, it was a new mold completely, wasn't it? Yeah. It didn't break the mold. They just made a new made mold. A mold. And, yeah. and that was it. And it, it's just, you know, that it's it's been... It's stood the test of time because otherwise, why would the be be yeah. you know retro yeah. again and bring it out? But it's um, to have it back in the collection because I I couldn't wear those pairs now. The the pairs that I used yeah. to have back, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, they, they'd be falling. Up. There's a couple of pairs that I do still wear that, that mm -hmm. really I shouldn't be wearing because they, they just fall apart on me. Oh, is it? Oh man! But <laughs> you know to to see these back in and, and mm. just. It, again, it just comes back to the branding, and it, it's it's everywhere it needs to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you know that gum sole is just yeah, it's just stunning, isn't it? it really oh, is. Brilliant. So so big ups to Alas for, yeah. for bringing this back again. It. I appreciate yeah. it. Don't worry, I've got. I'm gonna make sure I get your size for you <laughs> of mine. You know, so <laughs> I got I got a lot of work to do now. I got I got quite a few pairs I need to sell. So you know, we'll we'll, we'll get there. Uh, no. So um. So back it so back in um the day when you uh you know were 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 coming up and and collecting and stuff like that, I mean, how do you how do you see the brand had trans because it trans it, it, it transitioned from obviously being a, a predominantly tennis brand into like the, the mm -hmm. type, type of terrace culture and I mean you you kind of grew up around that time, so how did you see it kind of transcend? Yeah, it, it's it's interesting because people sort of kind of pigeonhole um, particular brands. So Adidas was, you know, a real terrace culture brand. Mm -hmm. um, Aless was a real sports brand. So it was more, it was more around the tennis that it, that it, it, I, I first picked it up. Mm -hmm. um, but then you, you had you had that kind of casual scene as mm -hmm. well. So which, and I, I think that kind of crossed over really. So that moved from that hardcore terrace group mm -hmm. of people more into just general kind of sportswear and mm -hmm. sportswear became a thing that you could you could wear sort of during the 80s because people weren't wearing that prior to that you know you wouldn't walk around in a tracksuit you wouldn't walk around yeah. in kind of that kind of branding before that time and i think alas were one of the first companies really to 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 cross over uh, and bring that 
and as I say, price point was quite high at the time for a less. Mm. Um, and I, I, I remember another story. I, I actually remember being on holiday years. You know, it was. I think it was. It was early eighties actually, mm-hmm. um, and we were out in Austria on on holiday. And Les was for me was just becoming a really big brand. And I remember talking to the guy at the reception at the hotel when we were on holiday in Austria, saying, "I need to get some sports shops. You know, I don't want to be looking at scenery. I don't want to be doing things with parents. So where, where yeah. the nearest? Get me to the nearest sports shop." And there wasn't wasn't actually any around where we were but we were probably only about 20 miles or so from the italian border so he mm. said there's a there's a village can't remember the name now he said but there's a village just over the border he said and and there's some sportswear shops over there he said you you'll get you know all the brands that you're looking for mm-hmm. so i dragged my parents over over the border I, I can't actually remember we must have gone on a bus or something like that <laughs> back in the day mm. uh, had a little trip over in into italy across the border uh, went into this town and there was this just like a it was quite a small sports shop mm-hmm. but it all it had was a last gear in it oh wow uh, oh, man. i was i was in heaven absolutely heaven <laughs> and I, I sort of two weeks spending money that i had back in the day mm-hmm. that literally all went in about half an hour in this little sports shop in, oh. in italy and um i I just I, I remember buying I think I bought a couple two or three polo shirts at the mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. um there was there was like a, a blue and white stripe one with the with the branding on mm-hmm. and I, I remember because I, I I got home and the first time I went out in that man was I was I feeling good rocking that because <laughs> no one no one had that kind of yeah. um, stuff mm-hmm. back back then so mm-hmm. to, to wear that was really good and it, that was about the time that it that Alas, we're kind of changing from the sports brand and people were wearing it more as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously I, I think uh, when you've got big names wearing it so you know becca chris Everett from the tennis scene back back then when they they were wearing it mm-hmm. and then that's that's transitioned through the ages and and if they've, they've always kept the branding and mm-hmm. and if they've, they've always picked the right people as well to represent the brand yeah I, you know the, the, yeah. There's, there's never been issues um and you know it, it's it's just been one of those where you've seen seen the brand, and as I say, I, I think it's really great because I've been watching these podcasts as well, and we've seen mm-hmm. you know the LS live streams that they've been doing yeah. recently or during the lockdown, mm-hmm. and you know for me to see the younger kids now, so you've got your rappers, your singers, all those kind of people, and they're they're carrying on that tradition that yes. uh, you know I I was I was wearing that back in the in the early to mid eighties, yeah. still wearing it now. Mm-hmm. I hope that those kids who are who are repping it now mm-hmm. are also still repping it in the future because it is. It's just one of those brands that, that it'll, yeah. it's it's you kind of a last for life. I know that might sound a little bit cliche, but once you once you see the you know the the style and and uh, and the designs, mm-hmm. I think you're just hooked in, aren't you? And, yeah. and that's it. No, I, no, I, I I totally agree with you. I think um, you know I think sometimes it's all about just letting people know. You know, because even though it, you know, even though Les has been around since like the the, the fifty, like late fifties, sixties, and stuff, um, in today's time, social media kind of blinds us to kind of only see a certain amount of brands. If that makes any sense, you know, yeah, with the no. amount, you know the way hype is and stuff. But when you actually mm-hmm. let people know, um, you know, or you bring a bit of light to the brand, you know, mm-hmm. and the new the new kids would be like whoa this brand's been around for ages and it's got such a, a yeah. deep history and an archive and stuff like that and it's just mm-hmm. letting people know it's letting the kids know and hopefully once they know they see the history well that's it i mean we've talked before about the history and how important <laughs> for, for any item that is mm-hmm. and, and and we we like to dig and we're inquisitive and and we're always learning that you know even now i'm still learning about stuff still learning mm-hmm. about brands and that mm-hmm. and, I, and i hope that, that the kids are aware of it now like you say, they they didn't know that it was, or that they won't have known that it's been around since what, yeah. like fifty nine, or something like that. <laughs> so that they, they, they won't be aware of that, and they, they might not be bothered. But for me, that's important because mm-hmm. there's some real, real history, mm-hmm. some real heritage there, mm-hmm. and and you know that's that's just gone through the years, and and it's been it's been great to see how they've developed. Um, you know, obviously materials have changed, uh, productivity has changed, the manufacturing process has changed massively mm-hmm. in that time, but they've always kept up and, and yeah. they've always kept ahead in, in, in my view as well. Mm-hmm. And it's just been, it's just been great to, to continue to wear LS as well. 
yeah. um, you know, over the years, and and to see and to see these retro shoes coming out is yeah. just, you know, yeah. people like you and me who where where trainers are important. I mean, yeah. we haven't talked about the track tops either, but oh, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> literally waiting for a delivery today. So yeah. if if I have to shoot off to the door at some point, don't worry. I'm waiting for another track top to come today. <laughs> well, that's uh, an track top that I found online and I was just mm -hmm. I saw it saw the colors mm -hmm. and I was like man I've got, got to get that got to have that so, wow. so that so for me the, the track tops as well are just mm -hmm. one of those things that you know yeah. that you, you, you've got to get those yeah I mean hopefully fingers crossed I can I can get a trip over to um, LS's archive because I just want to see the old stuff man I remember in, yeah. in, in school they we used to have some black shoes and I said this um, earlier like is on black shoes and they were like the perfect school shoes and they had like an less a black and it had a green sole and a red sole and it had like mm. i mean and they would have put that was like the school shoe of like of yeah. of, of of my year at the time you know mm. so 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 mark you're from um chester right um is that where you grew up and yeah i always always live around sort of in the northwest of england so um, it, it's very different to kind of the London scene. We've talked before about the, the differences in, in, you know, even just living out, out of a, a city centre. So mm -hmm. I'm probably about 10 or 15 miles. I'm sort of in between Liverpool and Manchester, really. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, but it's, it's close enough to go into the cities and, and then come back out again mm -hmm. uh, when, once you've been in. But it's, it, you know, it, it is a very different scene, I, I think, in, in sort of city centres, particularly in London. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I come down to London probably three or four times a year. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I go down and, it, you know, it, it takes forever just to, to look around two shops, you know, <laughs> let, let alone yeah. Old London. Yeah. Um, it's, say, so it is a very different scene, but it is good because obviously we've got online shopping now, so yeah. everything's ordered so, so the kids can see what's yeah. available. And it was funny because I, I I was looking last night again at LS products and and it, it's just like the, there's so much out there, particularly mm. for the kids now. Oh, it's, loads. A, it's a great loads. great market for yeah. them. Uh, there's, there's, there's so much. Colors are great. Materials are great. Uh, you know, we're heading towards summer hopefully now, and mm -hmm. if we can get this lockdown lifted and everyone can oh, can get out again, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> There's yeah. some really good stuff for, mm -hmm. for them to be wearing, and you know, I wish I was that little bit younger and I could could get away with wearing some of the stuff that's out there. Don't now. worry, be <laughs> like me, man. Be like me. You know, <laughs> I just I just rock whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, well. So, so being 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 where you are, what, where were the shops? What what shops did you did you have to go that, that you can get to that had? Well, this stuff? where where I live, um, it was literally there was a, a small shop in in the village that I, I live in, which was just like it sold tennis rackets. Uh, I think it was like badminton, cricket, um, and then it just had football shirts. So that there used to be a lot of football tops in, uh, and then there was one or two brands. Um, a less wasn't one of those brands. You couldn't get that in in our sort of in our local village. So you'd always have to go into sort of Liverpool or Manchester. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they had it in sort of Chester at that time either. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd have to go to the slightly bigger branded shops to to get that, mm -hmm. or just be very lucky because occasionally some of the smaller shops did get a little bit of stock in, mm -hmm. but it was really really hard to get hold of. Um, so you know, there was quite often they'd, they'd get a small supply of t-shirts or, or track tops in, and literally you wouldn't tell anyone that that they were in yeah. because you wanted to go get them yourself. Yeah. So yeah. you know, but I, I'd always get the train, get the bus, whatever, mm -hmm. and go in into. It was probably Manchester for me back then, mm -hmm. uh, and and then you'd be able to pick up those pieces. Um, but as I say, back then they were quite expensive, so you, you wouldn't be able to buy many pieces at the time. Yeah. Whereas we're, we're a little bit more fortunate now, and I think you know, in, t in terms of price and everything, it's really accessible for people yeah. now. Yeah. Um, you know, you can get t shirts for sort of 20 25 pounds, which is you know, a really good price. Yeah. Whereas I'm sure back then they were oh. probably two or three times the equivalent <laughs> price, but yeah. I mean, it was, it was expensive, yeah. So it's much more accessible now, it, it, it's great, I think, and with online as well, and uh, you know big ups to the delivery drivers because I'm seeing about 20 a day around my, my way because they're, oh, they're, wow. <laughs> they're just dropping stuff off left, right and centre because oh, no wow. one can get 
So yeah, yeah. But the kids yeah. have got really good access now, which I think is great. Mm. So um, you know, yeah. it, it is good that they can. And I think they can I think that's that's something that you know a lot of kids probably take for granted because it was like that. You had to travel. You know, it yeah. wasn't. You know, before the internet. You had to. Yeah, we didn't have the internet. It was it was a sort of Saturday morning, and you had to you, you had to get up early because really? you know there was like a couple of trains that would take you into Manchester, um, and it you know it was it was a full full kind of day out to to go into into the city centre like that. We didn't have the internet. Um, you know, oh, we sound really old now, don't we? But, you know, <laughs> it's uh, well, but you know we didn't have that and and that's that's again that's a big change um you know in in the consumer sort of environment that literally within seconds we can we can get our phone we can order something mm. and it's you know under normal circumstances it's next day delivery yeah. back then it was it was a week or a fortnight of saving up your money mm. then getting a train you know it's a full day out just to buy one item of clothing so so things have really changed but all for the better i think in, in that respect certainly yeah yeah no um so also um so unless are doing a, a a design competition i don't you know to win to to win someone's yeah. own um uh, tanker um so mm. for in your opinion what makes a classic shoe like you know, I know you talked about the the toe box and stuff, but what makes a classic a classic shoe? I I think the the silhouette is really important, and and obviously the tanker silhouette has has just got all those elements. Um, I I would keep the gum sole. So you know, for me, the gum sole is just something that's just you know it, it it's up there for me. Mm. Again, that if you've got the branding in the uh, in the sole, that's super. I. I like, I must admit, I like suede slightly more than leather. So mm -hmm. a, a bit like you, I think, mm -hmm. my, if I was designing that, I think the, the material would be suede. Mm -hmm. um, whether you could incorporate that all over the, is your, because obviously I've not seen yours in hand. Is, is yeah. that all over suede? It's yours? all over suede. Um, I'll show you. Yeah, so it's, it's all, like, it's all over. The whole yeah. shoe. Yeah, the whole shoe. You know. The gold laces. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that thank, is just, uh, thank you. That's that's that touch, isn't it? Yeah, but, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Mm. So, so I think for, for me, it, it you would obviously, I don't think you'd be rocking a gum sole with with suede, particularly. You could probably get away because it, mm. it's quite a big, I think it's quite a big shoe, it's a really substantial shoe. Mm -hmm. the tank, yeah, uh, yeah, so, so what whether I'd whether I'd put you know a gum sole on that, but certainly I'd 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 lash it in suede. It would absolutely be covered in suede for me. So <laughs> you've definitely done the right thing. Yeah. Um. And a, a flat lace. I I on this shoe, mm. I think a flat lace is good yeah. because obviously you've got, there's so many different kinds of um, laces out there now as well. But a a, a a nice fat white lace, I think, is um, is always good. Mm. Um. So uh, you know they're, they're the key elements for me. Um. And I, I, I say I think I, I really love what I think Visionarism did with the um, where, where they just put the gold yes. here in the brain. Yeah. In the, uh, that was just a, a really really good touch from them. So so I, I think you know in terms of it, I would like to see a high top version as well because as mm. I say I, I remember back in the day that they, mm. they had the um, the tanker high top mm. with really really big bold branding all over it. So mm. that'd yeah. be good. So but, well, yeah. Um, that's Let's hope we big can. Up, um, yes. Good yeah. <laughs> no, big them up. No, let's hope we can uh, see if we can get a retro. I think sometimes as well, it is you know you, you do need people like like Cali um, because Cali has the original models that sometimes the brands they don't keep. I know Les has got a really crazy archive, but sometimes they yeah. don't have the original models um, of that. You know, so sometimes. No, it's, I, I mean, I mean, I, I've, I haven't got them here. Um, I, I've, I've got them somewhere else, but mm -hmm. I, I know that I've got quite a lot of old shoes, but mm -hmm. I, they're also, they're not in a good state at all mm -hmm. because we used, to, we used to wear them and we yeah. used to wear them out. Mm -hmm. I've, still, I, I've still got a, a few pairs, but, mm -hmm. you know, whereas these days I, I kind of, you know, you look at these and it's, I don't actually want to wear them because they're too <laughs> nice. I want to yeah. put them in a cabinet of a display thing but mm -hmm. these will get worn and, and these will sure. get beaten i'm sure i think the good yeah. thing is is that is 
like when you do look on on their website you know which is which is opening it's reopening next week due to obviously the lockdown they had to close but their website is reopening next week when you look on their website um they they have used so many different colorways and stuff like that and i think the yeah. good thing is because it's available like because one thing that people don't understand with 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 how brands are now when back in the day when it sold out it sold out that was it it there was no restocks there was no do you get i mean once the shoe had sold out that was when it, it gone it, yeah, was, it was gone. gone it was gone you know and and the good thing i think now is is because it's on um um the website you can probably order wear it out and then you know go back and then reorder it you know yeah. and then i mean if it is sold out there is secondary markets but we never had that back in the day no no, yeah. it's it, it's a very, it's a very very different scene now because like you say, you used to buy a trainer, you could wear it, you could always go back and get another one if you wore yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. As today, the, the, I mean, you used to term, the term hype beast, and and I yeah. think we've probably all been a little bit guilty of that. Yeah. In recent years, because <laughs> you see something and 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 you you want it, um, but it is it is much more accessible now. I think so. You know, the the kids can. That you touched on the colours as well that are available. Yeah, um, so many colours. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think Aless was probably one of the first brands to really introduce the colour in the way that they did. Um, things before that were a little bit bland. Yeah. So, the, the one quite, you know, genuinely, Aless, I think, was, was one of the first brands where you saw that real pop of colour, mm -hmm. those different hits of colour that you hadn't seen yeah. um, previously. So, you know and, and as television with you know people were become more and more sort of watching tv and stuff mm -hmm. and, and seeing big name stars wearing um because I, I think that's for me that's probably where it started mm -hmm. in terms of um famous celebrities famous people and celebrities being associated with clothes it was in the sports market oh, so yeah. you know yeah. around that time you'd got um you know you got your basketball players we won't name them but they you yeah. know they had <laughs> good shoes coming Eight to five, so yeah. um, you know, but uh, you know, and, and I say you've got those big names like Chris Ebert and, and Boris Becker, who were the, the tennis players that everyone was watching on TV at Wimbledon, mm. and and they were repping that brand. And I think that's probably where branding and, and celebrities kind of first came to mix for me, um, because before that, I I can't I can't name a celebrity and a brand before that. I mean, obviously it's massively different now and I've, all the celebs are wearing and, and repping different mm. brands and mm. a lot of them have got their own brands as we know, but, yeah. but back then the, the, the sports stars, sports celebrities were the first kind of people to be to be wearing those brands and, and that's where it started. No, so fantastic. yeah, big ups to Aless for that. No, that's fantastic. Cool. Um, so have you got any other stories before before we finish? Any? I think I'm probably done on the story from <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> You've had me digging through the archives for the for the Wimbledon ticket. That's brilliant. That's uh, brilliant. You've got me reminiscing about holidays, um, you know, <laughs> my, my, and then you, you've also got me looking at the uh, the tanker trainer again. So I, I think that's probably it for me. But just really looking forward to see what Aless, you know, are going to do in the future as well, because mm. they, they they are just one of those brands that are continually developing. Mm -hmm. um, always bringing out new stuff, looking at looking at new materials, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, you know I have watched some of the podcasts and I, I've watched the um, you know the live streams that LS have been doing. Yeah. And when you see the younger kids and and the the LS gear that they're wearing, you just think, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the yeah. they've got it spot on. They, they've yeah. got it absolutely. You know, it, it's class. It really is. So yeah. now it's been it's been great to talk about the the brand and great to talk with you today as well. No, I, I just want to say a massive massive thank you. Um, you know, um, I have to also say thank you for your support because it's like I keep on saying to people like I'm nothing without the community and you are definitely one of the members of the community I really respect um, because the amount of support, the amount of like just encouragement, just commenting and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's really overwhelming. So I, I want to say a massive thank you to you. No, you're, you're, you're welcome because, you know, we, we appreciate what you do as well because but for me, it's never about you and what you're doing. You're just trying to put the brands out there for people to know about and say, look, guys, have you seen this? Have you seen mm -hmm. that? So yeah. it's never about you. It's always about the brands and, and pushing them and, and, you know, moving things forward for them. So, yeah. so respect to you for that as well. It's Thank been you. great. Great to see you today. <laughs> Thank you, brother.